Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Poor Choices Show. I'm your host, as always, Chris, alongside my co-host, David. Been tough, but we're back. It was a road to get here. Now let's make some poor choices. The fridge keeps them pretty cool. That's hot warm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the good news about the technical debacle that we're still kind of dealing with is we at least for the took us five weeks to do it. We got the same beers this week. That we did. We went with a Florida Avenue Dead Parrot. It's a light lager with sea salt and fresh limes. Brought to you by the great Florida Avenue Brewing Company with sea salt and fresh limes. I, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, we can actually taste the salt in it or if that's just, it sounds good. Let's find out. Let's find out together. Cheers. Tastes like a Bud Light Lime. You think so? It's good. Yeah. Like, if I didn't know it was this and you just gave it to me, I'd be like, ah, yeah, yeah. Nice Bud Light Lime. I feel like it's more crisp, more refreshing, and more subtle. I mean, I don't dislike it in any way let's say out of 10 i'd probably just go with a nice seven if i'm being fair with it i can agree with that it's not terrible it's not great it's nice middle of the road uh it's drinkable it's a nice sitting out by the pool on a 80 degree day beer yeah we're, well we'll be getting those really soon not sort of looking forward to it you're not sort of or you are sort of uh both yes <laughs> okay yeah, so it took us, what, two and a half hours to get this uh, show on the road this week. And uh, I guess that'll that'll lead us into my first question to you based on the last two and a half hours and a good hour and a half or so the other day. What would you say is a reasonable expectation to have for someone who doesn't work in the IT field regarding their knowledge of troubleshooting home internet connectivity? I don't know what would bring about this question. That's... That's that's a crazy question to ask. So I guess, so what, I guess to further specify, at what point do you? So you tried it at yourself. At what yeah. point do you go? Okay, I need to call somebody. I mean, most people's knowledge, I would say, is did I turn it on and off? Right, that's always step one. Did I restart right. it? At least in my mind, that's the first thing I would do. And then Google. Okay. What and would you Google? Google? Why isn't what, my internet what, working? Yeah, whatever the exact issue is, are you are we talking specifically with internet or any anything related to to your home? I just your your technology. Internet's not, your internet's not working. Yeah, so I would re I would restart everything. Um, I'd do the old outage in my area look up. Right. Um, Spectrum's definitely known for having their their outages down here in Florida. Um, after that, I would probably go to the before I had to actually talk to a real person, I'd probably go to like log into my account and hit that little help chat button. And then they say, well, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? Which I actually, I went through uh, maybe six months ago and I was like, yes, 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 yes. Then it turned out I actually had a bad modem and they had to come out with a new modem and replace it. I think it was from a, a storm kind of blew it out. And we yeah. lost power. So that would be what I would do. I think most people would do too. Most people. Do you think at any point in the average person's troubleshooting steps that they would make sure there's a cable going from their modem to their router? So, <laughs> I think you should just tell the story. <laughs> uh, well, I don't even know where to start. So we're we're trying to enhance our our quality, our video quality. The first step to doing that we figured would be to hardwire everything. So we had Chris get a hardwire adapter for his laptop and he we he discovered that his cable was bad, his ethernet cable. So the only other cable that he had was the one connecting his modem to his router. So he figured, hmm, well, I'll try this one. <laughs> so he he gets it connected to the computer 
doesn't connect to the internet. I don't know how long he spent troubleshooting before before I got the call. Like, hey, it's working, but it's not working. It, right. it shows that it's connected, but I'm not getting any internet. So we spent a good hour troubleshooting before bringing in a, a, another buddy of ours. and Also in the IT it, field. Right. Looked at it the same way I did and said, yep, that should be working. Well, these guys, let me tell you, let me just preface, they were like going through tons of stuff that I was way over my head. You know, they were definitely diving into like, all right, there's got to be something really not communicating or something's totally wrong here. And they're, right. they're going through all this and they're having me run all this stuff that I'm like, sure, yeah, just tell me what to do. I'll do it. Um, we're all yes. FaceTiming at the same time. So for the other nerds listening, we we had him manually set up his IP. We set the the DNS server, the default gateway. We tried a bunch of different IPs, thought maybe it would be conflicting with some of the other devices on his network. Everything was supposed to be good. So we lose our other buddy. He had to go take care of his kids. And another like five, 10 minutes of troubleshooting. And he's like, Chris is like, so the cable that I took from my modem that was going into my router. And I, I don't even know where you were going with that. I think I just stopped you at that point and was like, that's it. That's our, that's our, we need that I cable. That think, cable was there for a reason. I think my exact words were, should my modem be connected to my router? <laughs> okay. And David said, yeah, that's the problem. I think, I think I was deer in headlights at that point. And uh, lo and behold, once I got another ethernet cable and voila. Problem solved. It's like magic. What a, uh, yeah, that was probably two hours of our, our Thursday night, whatever day that was last week of just, um, I learned some yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was, yeah. But um, a little unnecessary. Okay. So that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're telling me that just the problems I deal with at work. If, yeah. If that was ever the case, I mean, it would never. A little doubt. I mean, it's all not. IT field, right. but the the problems aren't that, I guess, rudimentary. But if that was ever an issue with with one of the guys that I work with, whether with my company or or someone in the government, I would, I'd quit. I'd, yeah. Yeah. That would. <laughs> how did this person get a job with me? Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. So, okay, so fair enough. Maybe like an hour or so troubleshooting before you're like, I need to I need to call somebody for the average person. Yeah, at the most, because after that point, you're like, one, I right. just want my internet, and then two, right. wow, I've done everything I can do, so let me, yeah. let me call uh, it. You have a, maybe less time for you, you have a little bit of an advantage having the friends that work in the field and should easily be able to troubleshoot it. Assuming that, you know, <laughs> the wires are where they need to be. But well now I know what to do if uh I'm hardwired in and it's still not working now that it is yeah. connected to the modem. I at least yeah. know <laughs> those processes to uh to go through, which is which is always nice. It, it, it. All right. I just I I had to throw we had to start there because I don't know that this episode would be happening if uh <laughs> Yeah. If that if that issue was never identified. Yeah, w- once we got off our call, <laughs> I just sat on my couch. And I was just laughing at myself, just like, <laughs> like it didn't even cross my mind to, to, to like communicate that to you or to, right. wa- or to, more importantly, not disconnect the modem from the router. It was just like a, oh, that's an Ethernet. Yeah, there it is. I could use there that. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh-huh. I had a good laugh. Here. Yeah, at at my expense. <laughs> Too that's funny. Right. It was that's, too funny. That's what I'm here for. Too, too funny. But now everything's working, you know, knock on wood. Well, internet's working. We're still trying to get this whole fucking debacle figured out, but yeah. we'll get there. Um, we'll get there. I did hear today, I was listening to uh, the Kelsey's podcast. Yeah. And they were, I think they were out in Philly doing it uh, because of, you know, Jason just had his retirement speech. And I don't remember how exactly it came up, but at one point he had said Riverside needs to get their shit together. So they use Riverside too. Mm. All I'm right. not sure what what kind of shit they got going on that they never have any issues, but that's interesting. I mean Yeah. You know, we can also that's a good point. We can all also only do so much and if it falls onto the, the you know, the program then 
that's right. that's definitely unfortunate, you know. Yep, but you know, you, you, it is what it is. You could just move back to to Melbourne, and we'll just. My internet's better over here. You can move no, over no, here. No, no, I meant we wouldn't need internet. We would just be in person. We got more space here. Yeah. Got a whole loft we could set up a studio in. Well, I'm on the second floor, so technically a loft. So you could just, you know, <laughs> come on in the living room and we'll, we'll set yeah. up. Yeah, no no argument for that one, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Oh, man. Good stuff. Well, before before moving into anything else, I don't know if you've full screened me at all and see I've updated my my setup a little bit. <laughs> if you know how to do that. Oh, I like it. Nice. Yeah, it looks good. And I went with very America themed. You say a little bit of theming. I like it. So the reason for that is twelve years ago today, I joined the military. On this day? On this day, March 6, 2012. So is this the day that you signed signed the papers or that you left? This is the day that I left, that I arrived to basic. Oh, wow. So my, my date of service was today. So when you arrived, what was that a first, like, getting off the bus and they're just processing for hours and hours and you go to bed and wake up from there? Uh, no, the, the screaming started at the airport when I landed, so the... The processing was sort of like a, a drawn out process. It wasn't like a get off the bus, you know, go do what you got to do, and then then start getting yelled at. It was the second you're in the airport. It's go do this, go do that, go stand here, blah blah blah. You get on the bus, you get off the bus. It's fucking screaming at you to get up to your dorm, and then the following days is sort of the pro- the in processing. So okay. you go, you know, get your medical stuff done. You go do your paperwork and. And all that. Was it a lot no, of like was... waiting in lines that next day of just like I'm sure there was a ton of you, so it was probably just like, all right, everyone yeah. go do this, and everyone go do that, and everyone go do this, right? Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like a go do it because there's no in basic, there's no like on your own. Oh no, a, no, you, no. You follow your TI, and it's you know, we march in formation here, we march in formation there, and it's fun. Do you, you have anybody that was like that one guy who always got yelled at? Or maybe you were yeah. that guy. No, no, I wasn't that guy. I I was old enough and mature enough to know to you know out of sight, out of mind, keep your head low, kind of thing. We had this this one dude. His name was Cruz, cool. and he it's awesome. This little like Kermit the Frog sounding kid, and it was not nothing like intentional. It was just like who he was, sort of person that just you know the the speaking when you're not supposed to just just like the the little things that he would do or say or whatever was just it, it was like an easy target it put a target on his back so i mean there was 60 of us so it was hard to be that guy to be in right. those crosshairs but it was yeah cruz thousand percent cruz okay he still know his name yeah yeah and then uh, I remember, so the way they were, we had flights, right? So there's different squadrons, and then there's, I think based on how it's set up, each week has like two flights per squadron. So you have your flight, and then like across the hallway, there's your brother flight, and that's where Tally was. But, okay. So you didn't do everything together, but like when you lined up outside in formation, it was like you guys and then them. And I remember... At one point, we were downstairs lined up for something, and one of the TIs came walking by, and I don't know if she asked Tally a question or he said something or or whatever, but I'm pretty sure he called her sir. Uh Uh-huh. And she was like, do I look like a man to you? And I think he was like, no, ma'am, or something like that. And she was like, that's right. I probably got a bigger dick than you do or something. It was just, it was a very, (laughs) a very like, I'm sitting over there like, because I, I didn't know Tally like that then. Right, right. I was right. like, hey, this little fucking Italian kid over here. But I was like, and this chick, she was like five nothing. And I was like, wow, I'm scared of her. Yeah, little bulldog. So, yeah. And we were the bulldogs. So how about well, that? there you go. How about that? The bulldogs, but, huh? So, yeah, it was good. So I texted him today, wished him a 
happy anniversary. Very nice. Very nice. Were um, any of the other guys that I met uh, through vacations and finally moving down here in that same uh, basic with you? You met them once you were stationed. Uh, yeah, they were all they were all stationed. I think Tally. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there were probably a couple others. Yeah, there were a couple others I can think of, but I wasn't really like friends with them, so you never would have met them. I think Tally was the okay. only one that you had met. So the, the usual suspects that I've met were all after basic. Right. They were you. either already okay. there or got there after I had got there. Okay, gotcha. All right. So yeah, that's that's the I might leave everything up, but I figured I was feeling feeling a little patriotic. patriotic. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it looks good. It looks great. Good. On to you. Um, I just saw a, a stat today that's surprising and not surprising at the same time. Um. If you had to guess what the most viewed slash watched uh, television series of last year of 2023, what do you think that was across all platforms, cable, streaming services? What do you think the most viewed watched TV show was of 2023? By a landslide, by the way. I was I was hoping you were going to go with YouTube video because I'm pretty sure that's like Rick Astley. Oh, I was going to guess like a Mr. Beast or something. It might be. Maybe Rick Astley is just like he hit a million or a billion or whatever. Oh, I think he did. I, he hit a billion total. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's that's what it was. Um, I think I know what it is, but- Oh, do you? Okay. Maybe. Can you give me, can you at least tell me if it's a streaming service show? Um, It's on a streaming service now, but it wasn't- Produced by a streaming service. Okay. I think it's Suits. It is. So Suits, which came out in, I correct me if I'm wrong, like 2013, 2012, 2014, somewhere around there. Yeah, um, I was going to say 2014, but I think it might have already been a thing then. I wish I had the numbers pulled up, but it wasn't even close, which is really funny because I watched that show when it, first came out on USA back in the day and I said this is a cool show I've enjoyed it but I think I only got a season maybe two into it yeah um, I was gonna say I, I thought I remember asking you about it a while back and you had said you only got so far into it and then lo and behold last year I binged all eight seasons and sure enough I guess the rest of the, the world did too you know yeah I just they sure it, did. Was, it was very shocking to see you, you think you'd see something new but you, you know what I, I think it got and it is so successful is because they don't they, they didn't care they weren't trying to please everybody with this show they weren't trying to be politically correct with everything in this show and I feel like all yeah. these shows nowadays are just like whose feelings do we not want to hurt right you know what I mean and it's just detrimental to to production and entertainment and it's to just entertainment like, as a whole mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it's sad it is sad because it's they're pumping out so much stuff on all these and maybe one or two of them hit per year and that right. is it you know what I mean and that's just based off of the writing and the story where Suits is a pretty simple premise I mean right. he lies about being a lawyer and he's a really smart guy and there you go yeah yeah even the shows I feel like the shows nowadays that are good it's just like you could love a show and you're just like it's missing something and it's just like that that little bit of non-political correctness that just like I don't know, makes it like kick like you're like Big yeah time. I like this I enjoy it yeah it's just like I said everybody's tiptoeing around everybody's feelings nowadays that it's hard it seems like it's hard to produce a good show yeah I agree 100% I mean I was super excited for um what was it the Rings of Power it was a Lord of the Rings show um on Amazon super excited about it um Talk about trying to please the masses when they when they came out with that. I mean, yeah, gorgeous, beautiful show. I watched it all, but golly, was it um, just a lot of uh, PC vomit and just ugh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I'm I'm hoping that there's there's a lot of stuff that's supposed to be coming out, and I'm just hoping that some of this stuff does not follow. That's not the case. But it's yeah. we know it's going to happen. I mean, I know the big yeah. one we're we're excited for, and I think it's another year or two. Um, is HBO picked up 
uh, Harry Potter. Um, yeah, I think I read that's 2026. 2026 to do a yeah. season per book. Uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. You know. I don't know. I feel like that sort of world, I don't know what kind of political correctness they need to like make sure they adapt to. Yeah, well, the big thing that surrounds all that stuff is the whole J.K. Rowling issues yeah. that they've had in the past, and if her name's tied to anything, there's always people up in arms about it. And Right. Well, and that was the case with Hogwarts Legacy when they, they put that trans bartender in there. Uh, apparently that was on purpose because, you know, people were up in arms about the whole J.K. Rowling, this, that, and the other, that they were like, okay, well, she's tied to this, but let's please people by showing them that you know, we don't have the same beliefs that she does. Like, so what? Stay true to the book. Stay true to the story. If there's, you know, if this whatever type of person in this role in the book, just translate it to the show. Absolutely. And if you want to please them, you know what? Come out with statements, but don't include it in the actual work. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. 100%. I just thought that was a really cool stat. That Suits thing was like, wow, okay. Yeah. How about that? But so with that being said, um, I didn't watch it, but they made a spinoff with Jessica. Oh. Um, what was her last name? Uh, H- Hartman? No, uh, Hardman. Hardman. No, that was the other one. That was no, the other one. That was um, Daniel. That was Daniel. Pearson. Pearson. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it might be called Pearson. Oh, okay. I don't think, I think it was one of those, like, just, you know, it didn't, maybe like a season or two. But then I think we saw during the Super Bowl that they're coming out with another spinoff. Well, there was a commercial. I actually saw it recently with Mike and Harvey in it. But here's the thing. Yeah, I think that might have been something different because I don't think they're in the new whatever's coming out. Yeah, it was it a, T-Mo- been it was a it. T-Mobile commercial. They're just okay. promoting T-Mobile, but... Gotcha. Like, when I saw it, I was like, did they record this 10 years ago? Because they both either haven't aged... Look the same. Yeah. ...a second, or they just used old footage that fit for whatever their marketing was for that that commercial. But it looked like... Yeah. It was CGI season one. Is a, a powerful yeah. thing. That's a good point, too. That's a good point. No, there's a... I think there was a commercial during the Super Bowl, but I'm pretty sure there's... I guess you'd call it a spinoff coming... It's not, I don't know if it includes anybody, but it's, I don't think Mike or Harvey or anybody's in it. Well, speaking of spinoffs, did you see its own? I want to say I saw it on Amazon. It's already out, but I didn't click on it. It's a Walking Dead, um, and it's Rick and Michonne, I think, are the two main characters. I forget what it's called. Uh, something with love in the title. I could be wrong about that, um, but... The premise was something about two lovers trying to live in this world, so on and so forth. I don't know how new it is. I don't know how good it's been going, if it's got a big following like Walking Dead did back in the day, but I didn't even hear anything about it. So I just saw it. I didn't either. Did you watch? Because I think it ended, right? It could. I I, I, uh, I think I've told you this. I didn't. <laughs> I kind of yeah, yeah. stopped after Glenn. Once Glenn, spoiler gotcha. alert, if you haven't seen this 10-year-old show, uh, once Glenn's brains got bashed in and his eyeball popped out, I was like, Ugh. I kind of slowly fell off the train there. Gotcha. Because I know I watched, I don't know what season that was or, or what season I even watched to. I know I didn't watch till the end, assuming the end happened. But I know at one point Rick left. And his his send-off wasn't death. It was very open-ended. He was like, okay. from what I remember, he was like down by a creek or something, and some dudes came up and basically took him and like threw him in a helicopter, and the helicopter <laughs> flew off. Bizarre. So you watch one episode, and it's like, what the fuck happened? What do you mean? Like I feel like unless you... It's just like each episode is so slow. I feel like it, it takes three episodes for anything to happen. So like if you're not binging it... Right. Then it, it's like... So I, after I caught up to what was on Netflix, I couldn't watch it week to week because it like it wasn't entertaining. Huh? Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. It was definitely my like, oh, it's Sunday, Walking Dead's on tonight kind of show. Yeah. So did you ever watch a? Uh, 
I guess it might have been a spinoff or a little side, whatever, the the Fear of the Walking Dead. Um, I did maybe half of the first season. I just didn't really catch on to it. Okay. So that one that one caught me a lot quicker, or maybe not caught me quicker, but I, uh, like I could actually watch that episode by episode because it just felt like there was it was more eventful. And that was what, out west, right? Like California or something like that, or Arizona or... Uh... Probably like that. I don't even remember. Same universe, just different part of the the country. Yeah, and yeah, I don't right. know if it was prequel or. Yeah, I don't know, but that that one had a very. I don't know how much you remember about it. If you remember the, mm, not much. I got. Okay. Yeah, I think he was like the stepdad or something, but he had like a very. Like his death, like he was, it played such an important role, like his character, or not a, like a main role, and just like the way in which he died, it was just like happened and then story mood there was no like you know reminiscing on it there was like no grieving it's just like he died and everything went on it was very like so did they have a lot of like character development before he died like you felt bad once he died yeah and then they just and it was just like huh he's gone yeah it was very very odd not sure how i feel about that i guess i'm glad i didn't (laughs) didn't stick around for the full thing i (laughs) guess it's not like it's not like bothersome, like kind of like Glenn's death, but like yeah. you, just, you could you continue watching and you're like, are they ever gonna fucking talk about how this happened? And it like it never happens. So I don't know. It was weird. <laughs> well, I'm 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 in the I'm in the uh, the market for a new show. So if you have anything to recommend, um, I'm all ears. I got. Uh, it's a like a stupid comedy twenty twenty five minute on Amazon. Uh, it's called the Detroiters. Okay. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah, I've been um, binging um, Brooklyn Nine Nine on Netflix. I never watched it when it came out. Yeah, no, I haven't either. Pretty, pretty funny. Um, you gotta like Andy Samberg and his type of comedy. Um, yeah, I do. But it, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, check the Detroiters out. It's it's a good nighttime watch. Like twenty minute up to, there's like two seasons and it's like one episode doesn't really carry into the next episode right. kind of thing. Right, right. So all right, I was gonna say while we're while we're on the realm of um entertainment, I kinda wanna spin off of something you did last week with me and then I was gonna hit you with a similar uh topic slash question for you. If you're ready. I don't remember. I'm ready. I'm just trying to think. I don't. I can't think of any individual questions I asked you last week. But it was more of a other than the. It was a trivia, a little little something you asked me, and um, may have been just two, one. It wasn't it, part of it may rapid been, fire. It may have been two weeks ago. Um, but playing off of it, so we went through a whole couple weeks of. We did a lot of stuff, um, '90s related, and and trying to stay in that genre. And and you had put on me the uh, top five grossing movies of the '90s. So I wanted to up you one. And go to the 2000s. So, David, I want you to name the top grossing movies of the 2000s, meaning 2000 to 2010. Top five. You just love picking these topics for me that don't make for good. That don't make for good. I content. guarantee you get two of them. I don't watch many movies as it is. You've and, probably and you want seen to, four of the five. You want me to guess? And associate years there's, to these. There's got to be one that. that okay. Uh, let's start with The Hangover. No, that is uh, not even in the top ten. It looks like. When did it come out? Let's see. It's not in the. It's not in the top fifty. Maybe it came out after 2010. Could have. I don't think it did, but it could have. All right. Give me some genres. Are there any comedies? Negative. So one is an action movie. I'd say an action. One would be a, a comedy slash action movie. Um, the other would be a fantasy action. The other one would be a sci-fi. And the other would be fantasy. Fantasy. Are any of them Harry Potter? Uh, they are. One of them is. Number five is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. What? At nine hundred and seventy-five million dollars, two thousand and one. Why that one? <laughs> Number seven and eight as, are Order of the Phoenix and Half Blood Prince. 
I'm as disappointed about that as you were about Star Wars episode whatever uh-huh. the fuck it was being on the list. That's yeah. Okay, so is that the that's fantasy? the fantasy, just fantasy, just fantasy, mm-hmm. and there's a fantasy action, uh, fantasy, fantasy action. Um, there's a sci-fi, there's a comedy action, and then there's a action. Um, see, so number one in its time became the highest grossing movie of all time, beating Titanic. Avatar. It is. Avatar number one at $2.7 billion, and that is 2009. See, I don't I don't know when any of these fucking movies came out. You okay. know, I'm not a movie goer, so like when I watch movies, it could be a week after it comes out, or it could be 10 years after it comes out. I got out. you. Well, let's get you some hints then. Um, Let's start with this one here. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Christian Bale. It's going to be your hand. The Batman. Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is number four at $1 billion. Okay, I could have guessed that one. So you got two and three left. All right, and that's the, what genres? You've got a fantasy action and a comedy action. More action, but it, it definitely has a lot of comic relief in it. No, um, They're both sequels. Not necessarily the second one, but they're both not the first of the of the uh, of the series. I have a year for the action comedy. Uh, two thousand and six, so junior year of high school. <sighs> action comedy. Then the same series is actually number six on this list. Is it a Fast and the Furious movie? It is not. Um, it's actually a Disney, produced by Disney, but not a DreamWorks. No, it's Walt Disney Studios. Um, I want to say there's five of them, maybe six. I think there's six now that I think about it. And I think they just finally, this, this is going to be your hit, finally after uh, some court issues and whatnot, um, they finally got signed it. another one. You got it? Yep. Now I just got to guess which one. You said what year? 2006. Uh, 2006. What was the second one? Dead Man's Chest? Yeah, that's it. So number three is Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest at one, almost $1.1 billion. Okay. Last one you have not seen, and there's three of them. And it's what genre? This is going to be your fantasy action. 2003. Lord of the Rings. Correct. Uh, <laughs> you haven't seen them. You care to guess which one? Okay. Mm. Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, it is not. So that was the first one. Um, that is number fifteen on the list. Oh, is it uh, twin twin something? The Two Towers. That is number yeah. nine on the list. Yeah, not not the Twin Towers. <laughs> that was a couple of years before that. That's when Frodo gets on a plane and yeah, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> so this was a uh, Return of the King, Lord of the Rings. One point. Oh, so I didn't even get that right. Right. <laughs> so ah. almost one point two billion, and that was two thousand and three. All right, so you got one and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look like you're sweating a little bit over there. No, I just <laughs> fucking not just... not into the movies. I wanted to I wanted to get you something. You just, I, I'm not in, I'm not into any of the fucking shit that you come at me with. That's good. Broaden Ever. your horizon a little bit. Next, you're gonna ask me what the fucking capital of Kenya is. Yes, and then tell me it's longitude and latitude, please. No, not going to do that. All right. I have a, not really a game, but I want to vaguely describe a fictional character to you. Okay. And I want you to guess who that is. Okay. In a world ravaged by the unthinkable, where humanity teeters on the brink of its own morality, stands a man who has become a symbol of resilience and leadership. Once an ordinary individual, his life was upended in the most extraordinary circumstances, thrusting him into a reality where every day is a battle that seemingly brings a new obstacle. He navigates this landscape with a mixture of determination, compassion, and an unyielding commitment to forge a path for those he considers family. This character is a former peacekeeper 
a role that ironically prepared him for the lawlessness of this new reality. His journey is marked by lost pain and the constant challenge of maintaining his sanity. Yet, it is also a journey of growth, of finding hope and hopelessness, and of unbreakable bonds formed with those around him. He wears the weight of leadership as both a shield and a burden, making decisions that haunt him, shaping him into a reluctant hero and a beacon for others. Through cities reclaimed by nature and havens corrupted by power, he leads, fights, and sacrifices. His story is not just about surviving, but about the quest for a semblance of normalcy and safety in a world that offers neither. His is a tale of moral ambiguity, testing the limits of what it means to be good, to be just, and to be human. Amidst the backdrop of a crumbling society, he stands as a testament to the enduring strength of the human spirit, constantly challenged, but never fully extinguished. Jesus. No, no, it's like uh, like a character. I mean, it's I get the fictional yeah, thing. Got there, it, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my first thought was Batman, and then he said something about a world ravaged by nature. So it's like a more of a uh, end of the world type scenario. I also had RoboCop in my mind, but then once again, you said the landscape ravaged by nature. So it's something in a post-apocalyptic setting. If I had to guess, okay. Would that be a correct statement? I shouldn't give it to you, but I will. Yes, that's that's correct. Okay. Um, does he have superpowers? I, I can't. There's you. You gotta guess. Oh, I just gotta guess. I don't get any hints. Yeah. No. That the whole the last three paragraphs were hints. I don't know. There was a lot of he's a good guy in there. There's nothing much about him though. Oh, he's good. He's he's a leader. He's good. He's a former peacekeeper. So, former cop. Rick? It is Rick. <laughs> See, I thought that was going to be too easy to guess that. Okay. No, and you know, it was funny. When when you brought that up, I was like, I started getting all giddy. I was like, just wait. <laughs> this is literally where I'm going with this. But I didn't, like, I wanted to let you go after that because I thought if I transitioned right into yeah. it, it would have been so fresh on your mind that I would have been halfway through reading it and you would have been like, yeah, that's, that's and right. I was, I was just thinking too much about it. I was like, he did cross my mind. I was no, like, you were, but you, you, I think you were thinking accurately about it. The, the post apocalyptic with the, like, I wouldn't, if you said ravaged by nature, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think like it's fucking, it's just like way in the future. And oh, uh, uh, okay. It's like fucking just moss and shit <laughs> growing all over New York city. Do you have another one? That was pretty cool. No, uh, that, that was, was it. Okay. That was all I had. Okay. I, and I, I'm impressed because I, I actually took out a few things that I felt yeah. would give it away, it away a yeah. little bit more. Yeah. Like there was there was a couple things in there about like the undead and Yeah, that would have uh Yeah. But do you think if we hadn't just talked about the Walking Dead, you still would have got it? Yeah. Um, especially with that that peacekeeper. That's also why I thought Robocop. I was like, oh, because it was like former peacekeeper, and now he has to struggle. And I was like, well, yeah, they, they yeah. took his body, but he still has his memories, so he struggles with that. So I was, I was a little bit of a, but Rick, good old. So that Rick. was that was another thing I'd sort of changed because it said uh, he, the character, is a former keeper of the peace, and I was like, eh, that sounds too much like cop. Let me put peacekeeper yeah. in there. Yeah. So, no, that was a good one. I like that. Good. Yeah. Wasn't sure where you were going with it or. Or what, yeah. what hole we were going down? It's like, is he going to give me, like, yeah, no. describe Winnie the Pooh? Or, like, what's he about to do <laughs> here? Yeah, yeah. I could. Uh, that's And it's so funny because, so the, the like, the segment itself I, I got from another podcast that I watched. But the character, I was, I was sitting at work today and I was like, Rick. So the fact that it, it, it got there in an earlier conversation was like, what are well, the It seems odds? like a lot of that's happening lately with, uh. Just yeah, with the continents and just, yeah, it, that was so bizarre. To I hear think that, that was our first ever recorded podcast, and it was it's just keeps coming up on conversations in real life and and online yeah. and it's references elsewhere. Yeah, it yeah. just keeps coming up. And ours it, just came based off of we were just I was just asking you what the uh, smallest you were if I was smarter was. than a fifth right, grader, right, right? Yeah, which I was not. Yeah, or third grade or whatever, whatever grade we were in, I was not. Yeah. <laughs> You were close. You were close. Yeah. All right. So I, I have a couple uh, 
just random questions. Just okay. Get get in the beer thoughts, I guess, if yeah, you yeah. will. Um, is it littering if you let a balloon float away? I'm gonna say yes. Okay. Um, it's it's gonna pop and fall somewhere. Right. I think okay. I think that the was... I what was the I remember I remember my parents giving me like you shouldn't do that because and I wasn't sure if it was one of those things that they just told their kids so the kid wouldn't let their balloon go. I know one of the things they told me is not to spit my gum out on the ground because ducks will get it and choke on it. <laughs> I think that's there's probably there's some, some validity to that truthfulness yeah, yeah. to that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Especially when when we lived in Maryland, like I know we had ducks that lived like thirty feet from the house. I think it was also related to birds, the balloon thing, something about I don't know. But them it could hit birds could fly into maybe, it. Maybe or airplanes or alter their trajectory. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh but I would I would definitely say that it's littering. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the other one is why is prostitution illegal? But being a porn star is not. Well, you're not doing porn with the the public, but at a foundational level, you're having sex for money. Uh, yeah, agreed. It's it's the same <laughs> happenings, but it's not uh, like I said with the public. So it's both parties are why does both it matter? parties are paid for what they're doing. Why does that matter? Well, I guess. Uh, so the, the the answer I came up with was taxes. The government can tax you as a porn star, but they can't tax you as a hooker. I would say that's a really good reason. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know if there was any other, like, maybe logically something I was missing. That would be funny. Like, but, I mean, you know what? We're going to legalize prostitution, but you have to buy one of those little square cubes for your phone and guys can only pay with cards and you yeah. can only use it with our app exactly. and then it's legal. So kind of like marijuana has been now that it's... Exactly. I was just about to say, why did they legalize they weed? It. Because they can oh, tax yeah. it. thousand percent. Mm-mm-mm. This one's not so much um, just like a, a random thought, okay. but uh, it was something that I was... I don't know why I was thinking about it, but my my initial thought was what is the or if there's multiple what are the most random things that you've been asked during a job interview nothing something outside of the realm of like why do you qualify or why should we hire you so i've given interviews with stuff out of the realm right so i was i was going to get there next but i didn't i've never gotten any ever gotten no. no yeah for whatever reason i was thinking about when i was a how old was I, like 18, when I went to go apply at Best Buy? I remember we were sitting in the office, and uh, wh- whatever manager I was interviewing with, he, like, put a, a pen on the table and was like, sell me this pen. Okay. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, isn't this an electronic store? Why would I try to sell you a well, piece I've, of office Well, I've gotten that before, but... and actually it was Antonio who asked it to me when I applied for the Metro Diner. I wonder if I told him about that, and that's why he. Oh, asked yeah, he was like, "Hey, sell me this burger," and I was like, "What burger?" He's like, he, and he's oh, like, okay. "Any burger." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> um, excuse me, sir. Are you hungry? Yeah, you should try the burger. <laughs> it's pretty good. Like, <laughs> it was close to that. It was it was close to that. Yeah, um, like you're at a you're at a fucking restaurant. What did my uh? We had uh, years ago when I was still in Maryland. Uh, my boss and I came up with um kind of our own interview guide and most of the questions were pretty on par for you know the job but there were a few in there and we just throw them in as curveballs one of them being um describe the color yellow to me um, okay and the other one was why is michael jordan the best basketball player of all time because <laughs> we were both sports guys um so it was just one of we it, and it's the same thing as the pen we just want to see do they have you know that that quick reflex and you know, do they have that, uh, what's that word, uh, how, how you react to adversity or, yeah, I'm having a big brain fart right now. Um, when you have to make something up I need a on little the more spot, to help you out. improv, bam, got it. 
We got there. We're there. We're there. So yeah, I've had some dabblings with it on both ends, okay. I suppose. I feel like it's also a good a good measure of what well, kind of like you're gonna you're gonna be around this person, you know, 20, 30, 40 hours a week. So asking those type of questions based on the response you get, you can kind of get a feel for their character and you're like, for not sure. that it's supposed to be part of the hiring practice, but you're like, okay, I don't want to be near this person for five minutes, let alone 30 oh, hours yeah. a I'm week. I'm not vibing with them. Yeah, I'm not. So, yeah, right. 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 Absolutely. So c- can you give any, any uh, examples of responses you received from Michael Jordan being mm. the goat or describing the color this yellow? This was years ago. Um, Nothing that stuck um, in your mind. Most, the Michael Jordan one, I if I remember correctly, kind of froze people up, and they would just be like, "I don't, I don't know." The yellow one, we got a lot of like, you know what the question was? It was describe the color yellow to a blind person. That's what it was. That's what the question was. Um, and we got a lot of like um, <laughs> answers that were like, "But they're blind." <laughs> so they would say, you know, it's very bright, or uh, you know, it's like a. They right, don't know what exactly. The fuck yeah. is. Uh, but at least they answered and you know came up with stuff for it. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a while. It's I would have said, time. I would have said, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you really got to take a piss, and then you finally go, it's like that. Oh, that's a good one. Like just that that feeling of like satisfaction. So you call that the color yellow when you're just like, I mean, on the spot. That's how I would describe it to a blonde. Well, blind I was going to say if if I change it to blue, what would you describe blue as? I'd say, well, I can't say that because they wouldn't know what I'm doing. I was going to say go like this, but they wouldn't know what I'm doing. <laughs> would just say tilt your head back and just imagine dragons. No, I get it. But no, because they don't know what those look like either. I would say imagine nothingness. But like, so do what you're doing right now to the blind person. I mean, because they already right. have, yeah. right? Okay. But like, imagine it's beautiful. Imagine, <laughs> imagine that nothing you can imagine is pretty. That was a great description. <laughs> I don't know, it's man. tough. That's just it's tough. That's one of the things we take for granted is fucking being able to oh, see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had um. That's great. Remember that whole eye thing I had going on? Yeah, maybe a year or two ago. The Abraham leakage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, I thought that was just when we were golfing. I don't know. That was a full time thing. It's like um I don't remember the exact medical term, but it's called like like is eye it... like eye web, like a web, like a spider web. Um it's like the slang term, I guess. And it's it's like the member membrane on your eye is like slowly slowly like growing over the eye but when i looked it up sounds insane well when i looked it up it's one of those that's like super common millions of people diagnosed and 9.9 times out of 10 doesn't require surgery or anything like that but one of the biggest things that brings it out is ex- more exposure to uv light um and i never really had the issue until i moved to florida which I was like, well, uh, maybe that's uh, a little bit of a... So anytime, even if I'm outside for like three minutes, sunglasses immediately. That's partly cloudy. Nah, sunglasses. Yeah, but between your skin and your eyes, you're just, you're allergic to that sun. Yeah, we don't, we don't do well, well together at all. You start sneezing when you drink orange juice or... <laughs> No, you would have found that out a long time ago if that if that was the case. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We didn't really use enough to impact anything. Yeah. You're talking about the mimosas. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, a, a, a thimble of orange juice and a gallon of champagne isn't going to... I think that's diluted enough. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. We'll have, we'll have to do a mimosa episode. It might be a six-hour episode, but... Well, that'd be fun. A little brunch episode. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be okay. like a... It'd be like a brunch web series yeah i'll have some chicken and waffles and well who's cooking that well i'll make mine 
I'm going to start drinking mimosas before we're recording, so I'm not going to be in any condition to just, make chicken and waffles. Just, just door dash it on over there, man. And that's true. I have a... Well, we're talking about food, right? Yeah, go ahead. If you got... I got a food thing. Something. Wow, I love food. Okay. Let's... We're going to go back to the inner fat kid and you see how... You, he's outer, too. He's outer, too. So he's outer. I want you to, to blindly rank these fast food restaurants for me. Okay. Okay. Number one's going to be Wendy's. Is this currently, or is this when I was legitimately a fat it's kid? It's whatever you can pick. You're just really hungry, craving fast food. It's 3 a.m. and you've been out all night, and you want this place. Whatever, it's back when you were a teenager. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna try to play off of you and what I think you're going to throw my way. Okay. I'm going to put Wendy's at four. Oh, that's pretty low. Four, huh? Yeah, the only thing I really get there is the spicy chicken. Really? Okay. I don't go to, I never really went to Wendy's a whole lot. Well, let's let's go down the, the next one. It's going to be McDonald's. We'll go with, oh, shit. I'm just trying to think if I know you're going to do it or not. We'll go with McDonald's at three. McDonald's at three, okay. Burger King. Five. That was easy. Yeah, never. I feel like I can count on no, not a nice flame broiled chew. whopper or flame. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, your next one's gonna be a Taco Bell, number one. Wow, not even caring what the next one's gonna be. I think I know the next one, and the way I'm looking at it. So the only time I ever eat fast food, for the last five, ten years probably, the only time I eat fast food is when I'm drunk. So yeah. this 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 whole list has kind of been if I'm hammered, what do I want? Well, then your and last it's a one thousand. It's gonna be Chick Fil A. That's what I thought. That's number okay. two. Because whether I'm hammered or not, Chick Fil A is always delicious. But if I'm shit faced, Taco Bell is. So you're happy with Taco Bell, McDonald's or Chick Fil A, McDonald's, Wendy's Burger Wendy's King. Wendy's Burger King. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's perfect. That's funny because I almost thought about asking you to blind rank fast food places to go when you're drunk. <laughs> Would have been the, which the is same list. Which, wait, which is why that's the that's the thought process that I had going into it. All right, I need that. Well, next time I got to find something more, uh, mm, more mm, questionable. I think, or just make the options a little like. Throw like a Arby's in there or a like Sonic, a, yeah, something stupid. Well, when you say I think I know your last one, I almost thought about switching it on the spot, but I didn't do that to you. What would you have switched it to? I was thinking, I was thinking like Whataburger. I was thinking, I was thinking Sonic. Um, I was thinking like a, a Checkers, um, maybe like a KFC, something like that. Any of those except Whataburger, I, I would have been fine putting there. What I, <laughs> Whataburger is fucking gross. This is disgusting. I remember the There's... first time I ever had it, I was in San Antonio when I was in, in tech school. And I was hammered. And I was like, got back to the, at the dorm, I guess we were staying at the time. And I was like, this is fucking delicious. And then fast forward a, a year or two, uh, up, we're up in the panhandle. And we went down Destin for something. And we ended up at that Whataburger across the street from... Or the one so right next to there. Yeah, right next to McGuire's there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And wasn't drunk. And I was like, okay, I'm hungry. And I got a burger. And it's the most fucking disgusting thing ever. Was... So I've had the exact same experience as you. And I've only had Whataburger in the Panhandle once I moved here because we didn't have a Maryland. Right. And it was like, yeah, after I had one sober, I was like, what? Yeah. Did I just... hammered? You're like, oh, this is fucking delicious. But sober, Absolutely. you're like, like people do this willingly. It's... Right, right. It's not good. Yeah, not good. Not good. Oh, that's gross. Mm-mm-mm. Well, moving into non-food related things. Okay. Um, we'll go to the NFL. Okay. How do you feel about all of these running backs that are being passed up on for the franchise tag? I think like Saquon. Josh Jacobs. I think there might be another one. Derrick Henry. Yeah, Derrick Henry. They just they want the money. They're not getting it. They're not getting tagged. 
How, how do you feel um, about that? Well, I think they're all getting, aside from Josh, he's still pretty young. Saquon and Derek are getting a little bit older. Um, and they got younger guys they want to invest in. So, I mean, I get it. Do you think those guys should be paid by anybody? Yeah. Yeah, but once you get up into that age, it's not new that once running backs get a little bit older, they go and sign a one-year deal for a few years until they're really done. I mean, that's nothing new in the NFL, but as far as right. getting paid, like a good paycheck for it, has definitely been decreasing every year. Um, there's... I mean, so there's... Si side note, but related to that, did you know Todd Gurley's not even 30 years old? Yeah, he's younger than Derrick Henry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As you were. Todd Gurley, just... God bless that man, because he won me fantasy one year. Yeah. Um, the year that he broke out, and I was like, well, he's the best available. I'll take this guy I've never heard of. Um, but, man, he was, what, a year and a half, two years at the most? He was relevant and, and killing the game, but that's a tough position to keep it up for so long. That's why when you start naming the greats, it's because they did it consistently for right. so long. And, league, and I the think the league's evolved and it's just not that it's not that anymore. Aside from a few teams, it's not that anymore. Yeah. There's still a few ground and pound teams, but it's not across the board like it used to be. I mean the most recent one I think we've had in our lifetime was probably Adrian Peterson. Yeah, that's where I was thinking. It was probably the last one to be that true, consistent, oh, crap. They got AP? Yeah. Crap. He's going to do something mm -hmm. every game kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So you don't think Barrick or Saquon or any of those guys should get paid, even if not what they're asking, at least a, a high price tag? Well, I think they're all going to sign regardless somewhere. Okay. Um, But I think it's going to be – a one, maybe two. If they get lucky, they'll get a three-year deal with a real desperate team. Um, like, I know all those names are popping up to come play in Baltimore, which I'm not terribly mad at. Yeah, I mean, and there's Dallas is rumored for Josh Jacobs. and We've gotten all the rumors. It's, it's yeah. just, it's March, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's still so much going on. I mean, I saw a rumor today of your boy Brandon Cooks coming to Baltimore. So we're not going to be re another one that's just old. And that's what it said. It was like declining vet. And the dude was like, yeah, we just re-signed Aglor to a year. I'd rather have him as our vet than some dude who's on the way down already. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, that's a good point. Like, maybe draft or, or go for somebody young. Or, they're talking about Michael Thomas coming to Baltimore. I was like, why? Why on earth? Yeah. So I'll say I don't think any of them have any business being paid whatsoever. Okay. And, Why do you say and that? I'll, and I'll elaborate on that with a question. Okay. Can you tell me the last Super Bowl winning team that had a Pro Bowl running back? Ugh. Like they made the Pro Bowl the year they won the Super Bowl? Yes. It's the same team slash running back who was the last running back on a Super Bowl winning team to have over 1,200 yards. My first thought was Jerome Bettis. Um, then I thought Marshawn Lynch. I need a final answer. Let's go with... Oh, give me just another second here. What about if if it helps you... I'm 99% sure they weren't even the leading rusher on their team. I'm going to say, just trying to run Super Bowls through my mind. Yeah. So you, you phrased it as like it's been a while. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, go with I, your gut. Well, I just got another name that popped in my head, too. I'm going to say Jerome Bettis. Be? I'm gonna say Jerome. No, your other, your other oh, gut. Marshawn Lynch. It's Marshawn. I, my other thought was uh, Marshall Falk. No, that's way back. Yeah. No, okay. So running Marshawn. backs are still good since. Uh, yeah. So yeah, in 2014, he ran for 12:57 and 
Percy Harvin was the leading rusher on the team. What? I'm pretty sure. At least they run an end around every other play? Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to confirm that. Wow. Okay. So, needless to say, all of these teams over the past 10 years that have been dishing out high dollar to these profile running backs, for what? Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, you can make that argument with a lot of teams that spend a lot of money on players and they never win a Super Bowl. I feel like running back is the most, like the ratio of money spent to, I don't even know what the other side of that ratio would be, to I get championships earned, I guess. Like you, I feel like opposite the Eagles, the year they won with Foles, quarterbacks that won are being paid high dollar. There's typically a receiver that's paid high dollar. Well, how about all these, this whole past five years of rookie quarterbacks that are now coming out of their rookie contracts and getting paid huge sums of money and are not winning Super Bowls? Isn't that the same thing? It, it is and it isn't because that's like the captain of the offense. So you can evolve around. But like you said, what's the point if they're not winning? Because the alternative can be significantly worse. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it's that's it's a good hard point. to argue that the the alternative can be significantly worse for running backs when you have running backs running for 800 yards and winning Super Bowls. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. So I thought that was uh I thought that was interesting. It's a fair point. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, I don't. At least I hope we don't dish out a whole bunch of money to anybody. Yeah, maybe once Jerry goes, you will. Well, Jerry's usually the one that makes dumb decisions, so (laughs) hopefully not. We're going to play Two Truths and a Lie. Oh, okay. Typically, this game would be about me, but I didn't didn't have the time to think about shit about myself, so we're just going with things that are actually factual. How's that sound? Interesting. Interesting, but okay. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Two truths and a lie. The sum of all the angles in a triangle always equals 180 degrees. Mammals are the only class of animals that have hair or fur. The human stomach has to produce a new layer of mucus every two weeks to avoid digesting itself. Uh, the lie is going to be the animals with fur. Mammals. Good job. Can you name another one? Platypus. It's not a mammal. I believe it, but this says some insects also have hair. Oh, yeah, like a spider. Right, right, right. All right, the next one. Jupiter has the most moons of any planet in our solar system. A nanosecond is one billionth of a second. And glass is a slow-moving liquid. I'm going to go with the... Mm. My first thought was the nanosecond. You're going to be like, actually, it's a millionth, not a billionth. Um, Jupiter has the most moons, and glass is a moving liquid. A slow-moving liquid. I'm going to go with the glass as a lie. That's correct. Glass is an amorphous solid. Okay. Whatever, Whatever that is. All right, the next one. The inventor of the light bulb, Thomas Edison, was afraid of the dark. The Great Pyramid of Giza was originally white because it was encased in limestone. The third one's a lie. Okay. (laughs) The currency of the (laughs) currency of Brazil is the euro. Oh yeah, that would have been easy, anyways. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what the currency is? Ooh. Uh, the Brazilian dollar? I don't know. Not so easy now, is it? <laughs> it's the Real. Uh, with cheese? That's a Roy Royale? I'm just glad you got that reference. All right. Next. The human body can survive without the spleen. More than 70% of Earth's surface is covered in water. 
and there are four states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. What was the first one? The human body can survive without the spleen. Yeah. This is a toughie. I'm going to go with the spleen. That is incorrect. Damn. What's the Earth's lie 68%? Is... Nope. The lie okay. is that there are four states of matter. There are actually at least five, including the oh. Bose-Einstein condensates. I forgot about the Bose-Einstein. Sons of bitches. <laughs> Sons of bitches. Uh, I got two more. All right. The Mona Lisa has no eyebrows. The original name of New York City was New Amsterdam. And Shakespeare invented the name Jessica. I'm going to go with the New York. That's incorrect, and I'm upset that that's the one you went with. Because okay. I feel like recently we had talked about why states are named certain things or something. And I, I remember we were talking about New York, and you were like, hey, it's probably named after some British fucking place. Yeah, it's, na it's named after York. So it used to be New Amsterdam. Okay. <laughs> and the lie is that the Mona Lisa has no eyebrows. It was mm. previously believed, but recently high-resolution images show traces of eyebrows, which may have faded over time or been removed by restoration efforts. Well, I only went with New York based off of a fictional, sort of fictional movie. <laughs> so maybe I sort should have done that. Sort of fictional? Well, it's it's true story, but it's it's a movie, so, you know, they stretch some truth in it. Um, okay. Have you seen ga Gangs of New York with Leonardo DiCaprio? You already well, knew he, the answer to that before you even he, asked. He goes by the name. It's funny. He goes by the name because he doesn't want people to know who, who he is. He goes by the name Amsterdam. <laughs> so I was like, oh, maybe maybe uh, that's okay. what this is getting get played it. off of. The last right. one. Yeah, yeah. The Taj Mahal was built as a palace. A group of kangaroos is called a mob. And the human skeleton renews itself completely every 10 years. What does that mean, renews? Um, I'm going to say the Taj Mahal was not built as a palace. That's correct. Do you know what it was built as? Some sort of religious center, maybe? Just an educated guess. A mausoleum. Okay, yeah. What's the bone I thing? What a, I don't know what a mausoleum is. I don't know. I didn't look into it. Just the human skeleton renews itself completely every ten years. I don't know what that means. So in ten years, the bones I have now won't be the bones that I have then. I think they'll be the same bones. It's just like I don't know. Like they took a shower or something. I don't know. They just maybe they recalcify or. And if we, I, I would know. say, what if we like shed like lizards? But I do that anyways after I'm out in the sun. So. Sit like a lizard. I already know what that's like. All right, well, I guess uh, that'll do. That'll, that'll do, donkey. Yeah. Um, if everybody could like and subscribe and share and favorite and comment and tell your friends. Or don't. Whatever else you got to do to... Yeah, but do, please. <laughs> Make it worth our while. I think it's already it's worth a, it. It's a good as, as long as uh, the well, internet keeps working. They, it, yeah, the the recording of these episodes is worth worth our while. The the fact that it takes longer to fucking set this shit up than it does to talk about shit. Well, we need to make that worth our while. The fact that on episode five, it's taking more time than episode one, two, three, and four. Not good. It should be the Combined. opposite, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well figure it out. Yeah. We'll get to where we got to get. Well, thanks. Should I ask you another esports question? Or oh, I was going to. I'll hit you with the. What's the biggest country and the smallest country in the world? Go. Russia. Yep. It's the biggest and the smallest. Here's your hint it's in Italy. It's the. I'm going to say a right answer and I'm going to say the wrong answer. Okay. The right answer is Vatican City. Yes. The wrong answer is the penis of those who play esports. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>